In 2010, a veteran Elliot Sadler was at a crossroads in his career. The 40-year-old was no longer having fun in the top echelon of NASCAR and seeked a ride that could compete for championships and revive his career, leading him to the Nationwide Series in the Kevin Harvick Incorporated number two. Got a dominant week, dominant race. That's what we see now to Elliot. The streak is going to end for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. His domination of Iowa is over. It now belongs to Elliot Sadler Jr. Yeah, I mean, he cost us a championship. I mean, he's not even racing anybody. And uh, was holding us down in the nine, would have never got to us for that. So if you're going to race people like that in this sport, you're not going to make it very far. you got to have respect. I'll be honest with you. My goal is, is to, uh, to win this championship. My expectations, honestly, is a great season if we win the championship. If we finish second in the championship, will be a huge disaster. The last few years, and, and my wife said it best, um, we have felt like we've been standing on the side of a mountain, on a cliff, just waiting for somebody to run up behind us and push us off. Can you imagine living your life like that each and every day? It's tough. The lowest point, I, I think, is as a driver when you don't feel like you have a gun at a gunfight. And you feel like that you're just kind of a step kid. When you feel like you've got stuff that other people don't want, used in old equipment, and you're driving that because nobody else wants to, that's hard. Right now, he's getting help. Change for the lead. Here we go. As Joey Logano gets the push from Kyle, they'll take the lead on lap number two. So that's something that she's going to have to learn here throughout the day. Oh, oh, trouble. trouble in turn two. Several cars around. The 62 of Michael and that. Elliot Sadler's involved. Good. Sadler's return to the Nationwide Series would get off to a rough start, getting caught up in the big one at Daytona early in the race. But after having no finishes outside of the top 10 from race 2 at Phoenix to Darlington, he sat second in points with an opportunity to do something he'd never done in his career. He's only six points out of the championship lead. That's a lead he's never held. A good finish tonight could be history again for Elliot Sadler. Vince well Due to a miscommunication late in the race to stay out or pit, Sadler would stay on the racetrack with 34 to go, and although he would get passed for the lead late in the race, he would still hold on against fresh tires to get a top 5 finish, putting him first in points for the first time in his career, a position he would hold for about 3 weeks. As championship opponent Reed Sorensen would take the lead for 4 races, followed by Sadler retaking it before once again giving it up following a late race issue at Nashville which would take a top 10 run and put him in 30th, this time giving the championship lead to Ricky Stenhouse. Sadler would enter the next week at IRP trying to regain momentum and take back the championship lead he had lost. He would immediately, however, start off on the wrong foot. Crashing his car in qualifying, Sadler would elect to keep the same car he wrecked for the race, choosing to repair the car instead of going to a backup one. A decision that would almost pay off had it not been for a late race run-in between he and Stenhouse, forcing Sadler to settle with a 16th place finish. With 13 races remaining after that, Sadler would try to chip away at the 25 point gap between him and first, but over the next 10 races he couldn't gain any ground, staying between 5 and 25 points behind Stenhouse, and as they went to Texas with 3 races to go, Sadler knew it was now or never for his championship. To a man, everyone said, Elliot Sadler's yeah. going to win this championship. And so you knew yourself coming into this, this series, after being in the Sprint Cup Series, yep. having success there, that you were going to be the guy that we're, everybody was going to f focus on. Yep. How much pressure have you felt to win this championship? You know what, Brett, that's a great question because this is not pressure to me. Pressure is what I've been under in the past where you feel like you got a knife of the gunfight. And, and you got to go out there and perform. I know you said the last couple of weeks off have been good for your team, but yeah. the last couple of weeks on the track, you gained seven points on Stenhouse. And in, of the last four races, three of the last four, you've actually outperformed Stenhouse Jr. How much of that, though, is, is him protecting the lead or 
are you getting stronger in this stretch? I think we're getting stronger. We have made our race team better these last two months. We figured out some things about these cars. We, you know, KHI as a group, we had to learn a lot about these cars this year, but we've gotten better here the last few months. And let me tell you something, Ricky Stenhouse is the real deal, guys. He's a great race car driver, especially on these mile and a half. We have to lead laps today. We have to finish in the top two or three, we feel like, to gain any points at all on Ricky Stenhouse. So we, we have to, we have that goal in mind. Let's see if we can make it happen. He would spend the day running ahead of Stenhouse inside the top five, even as high as second with 30 to go, but after a spree of late race cautions and a poor final restart, he dropped back to a ninth place result, putting him down 17 points and officially making the second to last race at Phoenix the most important race of the season for Elliott Sadler, with his championship aspirations on the line. Sadler would however go into Phoenix and spend the majority of the day running in the teens having one of his worst performances on the season at a time when he needed to be his best. And with 26 to go, his championship hopes would be officially dashed. Jason Leffler really get loose there. Down in one, two. Elliott's able to make that pass two at a time. Oh, Easy! No! Oh, oh no! What are you doing? Leffler gets into him. Oh, that's terrible. And Al Marola gets contact as well, and the caution is out. Clements gets involved. So, oh, Shepard. Morgan Shepard. Morgan here we go. I'm sure Jason Leffler's going to say, well, he lifted too soon, but it's your job there to judge off of that car in front of you. Does it put uh, these other two cars in jeopardy? And then Leffler just dumped it. Here was Elliott's somewhat subdued gesture. As he... Uh, Obviously not happy with Jason Leffler, but as I said, I was expecting to see smoke coming out of those ears. Elliot Sadler coming out of the care center. Elliot, looked like you had uh, made a move and had two cars passed. And what happened? Uh, I'm sure the video shows it. The 38 just run right in the back of us. So um, not much respect for guys running for the championship. And um, there's nothing I could do. He just hit us square in the rear, and I just lost it. I don't, I don't understand. He's not running for anything. And I cleared him, I even gave him extra room to not try to crowd him. Have you spoken at all to Jason Leffler? And if not, what will you say to him? <laughs> Why would you, what do you want to say to him? That's, uh, what, it's no need to fuss about it. He just one of those things. And what, what do you say? It's, it's not going to fix the issue that uh, we're out of the race and have, have lost our chance to win the championship. So, I mean, very frustrating. Very frustrating. It seems like you work all season long to put yourself in a situation and just uh, it all goes away at a split second. Kevin Harvick Incorporated would shut down following the 2011 season, and Elliott Sadler would move over to RCR, keeping the number two car in one main financial as a sponsor, and what was essentially the same ride for him. Going up against defending champion Ricky Stenhouse, he and him would battle all the way through the season, as Sadler would look for redemption once again, trying to get his first NASCAR championship. Sadler would start off his season much better than he did in 2011, by narrowly getting through the last lap big one and route to a third place finish. And following Daytona, Sather would head back to the track that had destroyed his championship hopes just three months prior. Final corners. Been a long time, October 1998, since Elliott Sadler won a NASCAR Nationwide Series race. He'll be first to the checkers today at Phoenix. Sadler wins it. Sadler would capture his first nationwide win since 1998, starting a hot streak through the first eight races of the season, seeing him win once again at Bristol, while having no finish worse than 12th. But he still sat behind the guy who bested him last year in the standings as the series headed to Darlington, a track where Sadler had always wanted to win at. Oh no! Logano pushes Sadler around into the wall! After running in the top five all race, on a late race restart, he would be turned by full-time Cup Series driver Joey Logano, relegating him to a 24th place finish, and in his post-race interview, he would show his disappointment. I just hate it, man. I'm just fighting for my life out here to try to stay a part of sport and trying to do well and win a championship and win races and do a good job for one main financial and all their branches and stuff like tonight, man. That's just heartbreaking. It's just uh, it's tough, man. We got a we got a lot of points there to make up. 
Over the next few weeks, Sadler would make up the points on Stenhouse, as he would falter early in the summer months with three straight subpar finishes, giving Sadler the points lead for the summer. And after a win at Chicago in a race in which he was battling sickness, it seemed like all was right for Elliott Sadler as the Nationwide Series headed to Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the first time. Coming down the front straightaway, as we said, 18 laps to go. We're racing again in Indy. Black flag. The two car is being black flagged. Be aware. Two car being black flagged right here in front of you. And a hundred thousand dollars just went out the window for Elliott Sadler. Black flagging me. He's running. I have to agree with Elliot. I think the 22 did spin his tires. After taking the lead on a late race restart, NASCAR would make one of their most ridiculous calls in history. Black flagging Sadler for beating Kozlowski to the line, something he had no control over due to Kozlowski spinning his tires and his teammate Austin Dillon pushing him. So instead of winning at Indy, a dejected Sadler would give his post race interview. Robert McPemden just told me right out of his mouth, I did not jump to start. So. This is a very tough penalty. This is a very, very hard to swallow at the, the inaugural race here in India as I raced and win. To come here, we really wanted to win this inaugural race, and we didn't get to win that, and we didn't get to win the dash for cash, and we should have won that. And we lose a lot of points for the championship, and it's hard to recover from stuff like this. So, uh, I mean, we'll try to rebound, but today... He would go from 17 points ahead to now just one following the black flag before entering his championship opponent's best track in Iowa, a place where Stenhouse had won three straight races. Sadler would be unfazed by this, however, capturing his third straight pole there, and with 58 laps remaining, he would take the lead, cruising to the checkered flag and saying this statement immediately after. A dominant week, dominant race, that's what we've seen out of Elliott. The streak is gonna end for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. His domination of Iowa is over. It now belongs to Elliott Sadler Jr. You're not taking this championship from me! Yeah, baby! Over the next 10 races, Sadler and Stenhouse would duel for the championship, with Sadler leading the points in every race but one. Yet after a finish outside of the top 10 at Texas with three races remaining, Stenhouse would tie Sadler in points as the series headed west to Phoenix the track that Sadler had his championship hopes dashed at just one year prior. He picked up right where he left off by wrecking his car and qualifying, forcing him to start at the rear of the field at a track that's notorious for being hard to pass at. And through the first half of the race, Sadler proved that, struggling mightily to catch Stenhouse. But he would catch a break with a two-tire strategy putting him fourth on the lap 95 restart, while sending Stenhouse back to 16th with four tires. When they got to turn one, however, Sadler would immediately get loose on the two tires and skate through the corner, putting him from fourth to battling with Stenhouse for 15th immediately after the restart. Over the next 100 laps, it was Stenhouse who was driving through the field, while Sadler sat in the teens unable to pass. And with two to go and desperate for any positions, Sadler would make a move on the 88 car of Cole Witt. And in one of the most insane coincidences in NASCAR history, he would lose his championship at the same track in the same corner in back-to-back -back years. Come on, come on. What a great pass by Logano. Oh, oh no! Oh, Elliot Sadler into the wall. The championship. Luke Lambert can't believe it. You said it, same place as last year. It looks like he doesn't have anybody to blame. It's like he got right in the left rear and cold whip. And then the worst of it triggered it. He hits the wall and then the 33 hits him. On the red flag, a dejected Sadler was left to sit in his car and think about another year down the drain. This time on a wreck that was on him, a mistake he knew when he was interviewed. Difficult circumstances, how do you put that into words today? Well, I, mean, I, I did it to myself. I just I put my team in a hole qualifying like we did. And, they, you know, we tried to work on this car as much as we could. And I just, just got a little loose there, getting on at 88. But um, it's 100% my fault. I should have done a better job with these guys. And I just apologize to them for putting them in this position here in the homestead. You know, we're going to get in there and fight, but I definitely dug ourselves a hole. Thanks, Elliot. Marty? 
and after a ninth place run at Homestead to Stenhouse's sixth, Sadler would have to once again watch Stenhouse hoist the championship trophy. It's 2016 and Sadler is joining his fourth team in six years. Coming off of three underwhelming seasons at Joe Gibbs Racing and Roush Fenway, which saw him garner one win in three years at Talladega in 2014. But he would still ink a deal at Junior Motorsports, driving the number one one-main financial Chevy. Also being changed was the points format, as the Xfinity and Truck Series had swapped to the playoff format used by the Cup Series over the offseason. After eight races for JRM, he would capture his first win since 2014, again at Talladega. Although it was surrounded by controversy, after a caution thrown by NASCAR had Sadler ahead at the moment of caution, taking the win away from Brennan Poole, who to this day in 2024 is yet to win a race in NASCAR. Due to this win, Sadler was locked into the playoffs, allowing him to cruise through the regular season, capturing his second win just before the playoffs would begin at Darlington, a track he had always wanted to win at by holding off hard-charging Denny Hamlin. Three weeks later, Sadler would go into Kentucky for the first race of the playoffs, and he would get his third win of the year holding off Daniel Suarez, also locking himself into the round of eight. And with a second place at Kentucky, a sixth place at Texas, and a 13th place run at Phoenix, he was locked into the Final Four race at Homestead, going up against Eric Jones, Daniel Suarez, and teammate Justin Allgaier for his first championship. Sadler qualified second for the race and things looked good, but once the race started he would immediately begin to drop. Going from 2nd to 11th by lap 39, last of the championship 4 drivers. But the team would work on the car all night and with 50 to go he was up to 4th place, sitting directly behind all 3 of his opponents. It wouldn't last long however, as he would immediately hit the wall, and when the next caution flew with 42 to go, he was forced to stay on pit road and repair the damage, sending him to the rear of the field for the restart with 37 laps remaining. He was only able to drive up to 11th place before the 10 to go caution gave him a sliver of hope to save their season. After a dominant season in which Sadler had 29 top 10s in 33 races, as well as 3 wins, he would have won the championship in a full season points format, which the Xfinity series used from 1982 to 2015. But unfortunately for him it was 2016 and his only chance at a title was two tire strategy with three to go, and apparently Cole Witt, who would help Sadler with two of the championship four drivers by staying out on 40 lap old tires and just casually stacking up the outside lane for no apparent reason. Unfortunately, however, neither of those would be enough as on fresher tires Suarez would fly by in turn one and go on to win the championship, while Sadler was left with another second place points finish. Putting 2016 behind him, Sadler was back again at JRM in 2017. At 42 years old looking to finally collect a championship and break the cycle, he would once again easily make the playoffs, leading the regular season points in all but two races, granting him another playoff berth as a third seed entering the round of 12. And with his bonus points from winning the regular season championship, and five top 10s in the first six playoff races, he would once again easily make the final four at Homestead this time against William Byron, Daniel Hemrick, and again Justin Allgaier. Starting 14th for the race, last of the final four drivers, he would be able to get up to 8th place by the end of stage 1, moving all the way up to 2nd of the final four drivers, in just one spot behind Daniel Hemrick. And at the end of stage 2 he would once again be 2nd, this time behind William Byron. It wouldn't be until lap 97 where Sadler would lead the final four, until Byron passed him back for the lead two laps later, holding it until 36 laps to go when Sadler would retake it from him. He would immediately begin pulling away from Byron, and it seemed like this year was the year where Sadler would get his first championship, and he was just a few laps away until he came up to third place driver Ryan Priest with 10 to go, and he was held up immediately, allowing William Byron to run him down. Seeing Byron coming, Sadler would make a desperation move entering turn 1 with 9 to go, and he was not able to make the pass stick, allowing Byron to get a run and repass him. He's got a big run! He'll dive to the bottom of the racetrack! Byron trying to get by the 1. He slides up the racetrack! 
The one into the wall! With five to go, knowing he needed to get by Priest to have a chance to catch Byron and win the championship, he would enter three and four and try one last move to get past Ryan Priest. Byron able to get by Priest. Now he has smooth sailing in front of him as he goes to the wall. Here comes Sadler. Sadler gets into the back of the 18. They stay straight. Sadler even touched the wall. I mean, he cost us a championship. I mean, he's not even racing anybody. You know, was holding us down in the nine, but have never got to us for that. So, I don't, if you're going to race people like that in this sport, you're not going to make it very far. You got to have. After leading the standings for 31 of 33 weeks in 2017, his last shot at capturing a championship was gone. Although he would come back full time in 2018, he would miss the final four just narrowly. And after two more starts for a colleague in 2019, he would hang up his helmet after a 10th place finish at Las Vegas. And that was it. Sadler would never be a NASCAR champion, and after 25 years in the sport, he would have to settle with a slew of race wins. Four times in seven years, Sadler went into Homestead with a shot at a championship, and all four times he would leave in bitter defeat. Stories like this show just how difficult it is to win a championship at any level in NASCAR where the difference between a championship and a wasted season could be one wrong move, and Sadler demonstrated on four separate occasions just how true that was. But in the end, it just wasn't meant to be. I, I'll be honest with you, that next year, I couldn't get over it. Yeah. I'm like, what is the hell is the purpose? We race, you butt off all year long, you're doing all the studying, you're working out, you're putting yourself in position, and then one idiot can change it all not knowing what's going on around him and we lose the championship and and that hurts so bad